Okay, you've yes. been made the co-host. Yeah, very good. Oh, yes, I see the screen. Oh, wonderful. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. Oh, thank you for coming in early. <laughs> <laughs> we have no stress. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so then it will be, uh, it will start at two o'clock here in France. And yes. for you, it will be 6.30 p.m., yes? Yes, yes. Okay, <clears throat> good. On the phone. So, how was the quiz? So, I tried the attempt. Good. <laughs> I could not finish it because I think I... Uh, I'm still struggling with the last class. Uh, yes. I need to revise it again. Yes. Yeah. Last last class was a bit uh, tough because uh, <clears throat> yeah, some questions sometimes are a bit crunchy, <laughs> and I cannot resist. Yeah. But uh, uh, yeah, in the quiz uh, we uh, we keep on with tables, apples, and so on, cups, and so on. Then it's a little bit easier to to grasp the the tools, and after we can go a little bit in the deep questions. Yeah? Yes. Mm -hmm. So yes, uh, that's important to have fun with the quiz, and yeah, <clears throat> any mistake we do is always welcome. Yeah, yeah, because uh, then after we look for the answer, and uh, yeah, that's nice. It's a way to learn. Eh? Yeah, very good. Yeah, okay. definitely. But yeah. I'll try to make an attempt again, perhaps uh, today or tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, you will. Yeah, no problem. You have to take your time. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you may be busy as well, no? <laughs> <laughs> no, I think I had some time for the quiz, but I just freaked out. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, very good. So, can I check? Yeah. Okay, then we have 20 minutes, yeah? Yes. So then uh, I have time to prepare tea and I hope you can do as well if you wish. Oh, strong, a uh, one liter of coffee. <laughs> <laughs> yes, please do so. No okay. worries. I will join after uh, 15 minutes, yeah? 10, 15 minutes, yeah? Sure. Okay, thank you, Chavila. That's very kind.
नमस्कार नमस्कार Evening, Christopher. Christopher. How are you, Apalina? How, How are you? I'm well, thank you. How are you? Yeah, very fine. Thank you so much. I'm very Did happy. I pronounce your word uh, name correctly? Chris? Uh, yes. Uh, never mind. <laughs> 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 yeah, no problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the same. Yeah. Christopher, Christoph, as you wish. Yeah. <clears throat> same, same. Some, some, but different. So the sound is good, yeah? It is it's clear, yeah? Yes, okay. it is clear, yeah. And from my side, I will try to sometimes repeat the questions uh, from all of you to be sure that I heard every word because sometimes it seems that uh, well, there is a question and uh, the answer is not really <laughs> fit with the, the question, yeah? Because sometimes I miss a word, so I have to be careful. Yeah? <laughs> is there any particular book to uh, study this book, this debate? textbook yes a textbook there was one a uh, long time ago in the library in Dharam, in Dharamsala from Daniel Perdue uh, before he wrote the big one the big white one yeah uh, I'm not sure that it's still published but maybe you could find sometimes on internet a second hand uh, bookshop uh, and you could find that uh, yeah, we'll try to find the title again. Yeah, it's a very very old book, but uh, it it summarizes the the yeah the principles of debate. Otherwise, you could find pointing the way to reasoning. Yeah, pointing the way to reasoning from Serme Kensur Lobson Tarcheri Boche. Yeah, so uh, I sent a um, kind of book list on the yeah on the on the drive and maybe also on the WhatsApp. And you could find the details, yeah, pointing the way to reasoning. That's very, very interesting. And it's a kind of a, quite a modern way to approach debate. Yeah? <clears throat> and uh, you have the Tibetan and the, and the transcript, the phonetics. And Sarmé uh, Kansuri uh, explains sometimes each and every word of a definition and so on. That's very, very useful. Yeah? And uh, in that book, you find Dura, that's why that's what we are learning now, and also Loric with this psychology. And in the end, you have logics, yeah? logic, reasonings. Uh, yeah, very interesting, very nice. Thank you. My pleasure. Uh, one question, um, how important is, is it to know the Tibetan language uh, in order to learn or pursue Buddhist debate? <clears throat> it can be useful in one way, 
uh, is that the Tibetan language has been uh, made in one sense to convey the Buddhist notions. Yeah, because uh, the Tibetan language is, uh, you know, a uh, syllabic language. So it's easy to find the first syllable of a word and the first syllable of another one, and you create a new one that's easy in Tibetan. So, yeah, uh, that's why you can, um, yeah, if you, if you have time <laughs> and the wish and the motivation that, that can be useful, uh, because in in English and French and other languages, uh, when you have to uh, give a definition, yeah, sometimes it's like a mouthful, yeah, mouthful of words. But in Tibetan, just a few words, and that's done. Yeah, for lazy people like me, it's so nice. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, you you can you can of course do without Tibetan. You can you could of course learn Sanskrit. <laughs> but much 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 uh, more complex yeah. with the declensions and so on. Wow. Oof. Yeah. But uh, yeah, in English you you have so so many materials. Yeah, a lot a lot of materials. So you you can do without that. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so it should be time. Yes, perfect. <clears throat> welcome, welcome, everyone. Welcome, Namaskar. Welcome, good evening. Welcome in the game. <laughs> My favorite game. Okay, so I will start with sharing, then we will see if you can join uh, along with us. Okay, right. Very good. So each one of you should be able to see, yeah? Okay, wonderful. Thank you, Chavila. That's very kind of you to have organized today because uh, Nicola is very, very busy. He he does a tremendous amount of work. And uh, so, yeah, um, I would maybe just take the opportunity that he is not here <laughs> to tell how proud I am <laughs> of him and all of you. Yeah. Um, and some people uh, wanted to make a donation, but all my classes, every da Dharma talk that I give is totally free. But uh, if you want to support uh, Tushita Bailey, uh, please there. Yeah, you can just connect on the web page. And if you want to make a donation for the debate class for uh, Tushita Bailey, the, uh, that would, that, that's nice. Yeah, but uh, it's not uh, mandatory, of course. Yeah. And uh, so the most important thing is that you enjoy the debates and that uh, you keep your mind very active. That's very important. So uh, how was the quiz for the people who did that? How was it? Try to check the cams. So uh, from my side, I'm very happy because there were many, many, many good answers. Um, yeah, some people are already experts in dialectics. <laughs> I'm very happy. Thanks a lot. And uh, you could check the, the answers after, yeah? But we will uh, use that quiz in order to follow the class today, yeah? <clears throat> okay. And we have slides. We'll play with that, okay? So, okay. So if it's getting a little bit too fast, please there, uh, uh, raise your hand and then we can discuss again, we can repeat and so on, yeah? Okay, very good. Okay, so all those debates of course come from, come from the Buddha, yes, uh, the Buddha used reasonings, yeah, in order to ascertain reality. And then you know all Arya Manjushri, yeah? The Buddha of wisdom, you can call him a Bodhisattva as well, but yeah, it depends on the context. And um, uh, 
usually uh, when we want to increase the knowledge of debate, the wisdom of debate, you know, for some people who practice the Guru Yoga, like Lama Tsongkhapa's Guru Yoga, at some point you can increase uh, different types of wisdoms. And the wisdom of debate is symbolized by that uh, wheel of sharp weapons in order to cut uh, wrong views. Yeah, so that's just some kind of start with the images. Then Acharya Dignaga uh, uh, also formalized the debate, the reasonings, and so on, as well as Acharya Ramakirti. And uh, we mainly focus on Young Zin Kurbuchok. Chamba Gyatso Rinpoche's textbook, um, debate, yes, debate, the big one. Uh, okay, okay, so we have the challenger and we have the defender, yeah? So you all know that the challenger is standing up and the, the defender is sitting down. Okay, and the gesture is very important, yeah? Clapping hands means something. How, who, who would like to tell us what, what it means? Clapping hands, what does it mean? It's just like, you know, you want to to um, to scare away mosquitoes or, <laughs> or what does it mean? I just want to check if everyone can unmute. Can, can you all unmute? Yes. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. I wasn't sure of the answer. That's why I didn't respond. Okay. Yes, please. Yeah, just, yeah. Uh, if you want to share your feeling about that. Clap. I think clapping hand means end of what the person has just said, uh, what the challenger has just said to the okay. defender. Mm, yes. And uh, there is a meaning behind that is the union of uh, compassion and wisdom. Yeah, the union of compassion and wisdom. That's why we debate, yeah, discarding wrong views and so on is uh, with the motivation of compassion. yeah, And uh, so that's why we clap hands. Excuse then... me, Christoph, there is something with your sound. So oh, okay. since everybody mute, I don't know, it sounds like an echo, but it cannot be an echo because everybody muted. Okay. And uh, now how is it? How is it when I speak now? I, I speak. Still, it's still. Okay, there is an echo, yeah. And before there was not, there was not. Okay. And now how is it? How is it? Is the sound okay? Do you hear me? It's still difficult. I mean, there's still something in the sound. We okay. can hear you, but there's still something in the sound. Okay. I'll try to get maybe the mic. Um, now, how is it? Is it, is it better or is it worse? <laughs> Okay. Uh, uh, uh. Clear to me. It's clear to me. Ah, it's clear. So maybe the comes from your device. That's possible as well. I don't know. Maybe from your device. No. <laughs> so from my side, yeah. I click the mic and it should be okay. No. Yeah, it's okay here also. Yeah. Oh, okay. Wonderful. Wonderful. Okay. So yes, clapping hands is the gesture to show the union of compassion. Yes, yeah? so, so that's our motivation. Yeah, that's from the start. Okay, we try to uh, to to unite, to unify wisdom and compassion. That's very important. Okay, so uh, the school, yeah, so Trantika is according to the Pali tradition or the Pratimokshayana. So just a tiny point about that. Okay. And we've seen previously non-existent, existent, and so on. Yeah, you you all uh, have seen that. Yeah, already. Yeah, that's okay for everyone. And we will discuss again about things like this. Yeah, about existent and impermanent, permanent, and so on. Yeah, we will dive in that. Okay, so just the slides will be shared. Yeah, you will have time to read them. I will not go further into the details about that because we've seen that last time. Uh, okay, so thought consciousness. Okay, it just it was in order to explain why permanent uh, is the appearing object of thought consciousness. Okay, okay. And existent is the appearing object of thought consciousness. Okay, that's the same with one, one with thought, and so on. So we will discuss that later. 
Okay, start to play. Yeah, we will play again with <laughs> some consequences. Okay, so now you have the this the the challenger here here is a bit uh, yeah tough. So we have to be careful. So he says first the guitar church, and that's just the the the, the very start of a debate with the uh, seed mantra from Arya Manjushri, yeah? okay, from Jitar Church and as well as the subject, yeah, we we'll speak about the subject. Okay, so I don't see everything up here. Okay. Okay. And, uh, you, you, you can read the, the whole sentence on, online. Everyone, you can read the, the, the whole sentence, even the top on the screen. Yes, yeah, can. Yes, okay, very good. Okay. Okay, so let's start. It follows that you don't know. Yeah, well, I guess that you don't know the difference between the two, red and color. So you should remember <laughs> something about red and color because it was in the quiz, yeah, right? Yeah. Everyone, everyone has the difference between red and color. Do you remember how many possibilities we could find? Many, how many kinds of uh, uh, comparisons, yeah, or relationships? Yeah, we have contradictory, we have equivalent, three possibilities, and four possibilities. Yeah, is that clear for everyone? Do you hear me? Yes. Hello? Oh, okay. Very good. Okay. If you, if you want to keep your mic and mute, that's okay as well. Then huh? we can exchange more, like uh, in the in the flow, yeah. If you wish, yeah. Uh, unless it it makes that uh, some echo again, yeah. I don't know. Okay. Very good. <clears throat> very good. Yeah. So what the defender will say, he will say the reason is not established. Yeah. So of course, yeah. The the challenger ha hasn't said any hasn't given any reason that that's just the way a debate starts yeah usually okay the we will say from the first answer from the defender will be the reason is not established yeah okay so it follows that you know the difference between the two red and color okay what will you say what will you answer i agree Yes, I agree. Wonderful, Chavi. Yes, so I accept. Yeah, very good. Okay, so the challenger will ask you to posit the difference. Yeah, posit. Okay, so what will you say between between red and color? Who has the some kind of answer? You can choose. Yeah, contradictory, equivalent, three p, four p. <laughs> Okay. I think you, it's uh, three possibilities. Three possibilities for Zingru. Yeah. You yeah. check that on Google Rinpoche? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> no, you check by yourself. Very good. 3P. Who would agree with Zingru? <laughs> you can check on Google, Wikipedia. <laughs> okay. Okay, so let's check what is <coughs> our first job when we have to compare two items. Find the common locus. Yes, thank you so much, Shantila. Yes, find a common locus. Can you find a common locus? So the the the, the point here will be in the middle, yeah. Can we find a common base between red and color? Shantila? Yes. Red color. Red color, yeah? Yes. Okay, a red color. Can we uh, specify something more, you know, more precise? Like uh, something in the, in, in the everyday life or something like this? The color of the monk's robe in the Tibetan tradition. 
the color of a monk's robe in a Tibetan tradition. Yeah, that's a good illustration, no? Yeah, it follows that the color of a monk's robe in a Tibetan tradition is red. Except? Okay, it is red because? Aha! <laughs> It is no. red and it's a color. Yes, it is red because? Um, it is uh, red because it is a color and uh, it is of uh, suitable to be called the red of red hue. Yes, wonderful. Wow. Shanti last did the definitions. Wow, exactly. So we are looking for a common base between red and color, yeah? So something that can be both, yeah? That's a common locus or a common base, yeah? Something that can be both at the same time, red and color. So the color of a, of a red apple, for, for instance, a red, a red apple, yeah? Okay, so the color of a <laughs> monk's clothes and Tibetan tradition, yeah? It is red because yeah, it is suitable to be shown as a red hue. That's the definition of red. Yeah, that's the definition, yeah? Okay. Yes. So suitable to be shown as a red hue. That's the definition of red. So of course, if we have the definition of red, then we have also the definition of color, no? Everybody agrees? Suitable to be shown as a hue would be the definition of color, yeah? Dotoroa, dotu tenderoa, yeah? Okay, so sometimes the definition is a bit longer, sometimes a bit shorter, yeah? It's no, it's no, there is no issue with that. <laughs> okay, so, yeah, suitable to be shown as a red hue is at the same time suitable to be shown as a hue. <laughs> and it is red. Yeah, very good. So if it is suitable to be shown as a red hue, it's necessarily red and it's necessary a color, yeah? Everybody agrees? Okay, wonderful. We could have said, yeah, the color of a red cup. The color of a red cup, it follows it is red. And it follows it is a color. Yeah, everybody agrees? I accept. Okay, thank you so much. Very good, okay. Then we could find there yeah, the color of a red of a red flower. Okay, the color of a red flower. It follows. It is a red. It is red, and it is a color. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Wonderful. So, can we find red, which is not a color? Red apple. Oh, it follows that the the subject red apple is red. I agree. Oh, it follows that the subject red apple is a color because it is red. <laughs> uh, no provision. <laughs> so it follows that if it is red, it's not necessarily Except? Ah, accept. But if you say no provision, it follows that it can be red without being a color. Antilla, yeah. Yeah, red apple uh, is not a color. It's not suitable to be called a hue, but it is has red color. <laughs> it has a red color, yeah. <laughs> but it, it is not red. It has red color. It, it is not the red color. Very good. Yes. It has the characteristic to be red, yeah. So it follows that the red apple is not the color of a red apple. I accept. Okay, very good. So it follows that the red apple is not red because only the color of a red apple can be red. Yeah, the color of a red apple can be red, but a red apple cannot be red because red is a color and apple is not a color, yeah? Uh, reason not established. <laughs> So the it follows that the subject apple is a color. 
Ah, it is not a color, so it cannot be red. But the color of the of the apple can be red. Okay, yeah, we get it. Yeah, the color of the the, the apple can be red, but the the apple itself cannot be red. It cannot be its color. Yeah, okay, it's the characterized phenomenon and color or red. We could say red is the characteristic of that characterized phenomenon. Yeah, wonderful. Okay. So uh, if we don't, if we cannot posit the, the red apple because apple is not red, can we posit something which is, which is red, but not a color? Yeah, can we posit a, a, something which, which is suitable to be shown as a red hue, but is not suitable to be shown as a hue? No. No, exactly. If it is red, it's necessarily a color, yeah? So we cannot posit something which is red, but not a color. So there is nothing here which would be exclusively red, but not a color, yeah? Yeah, is that okay for everyone? <laughs> okay. <laughs> if you don't agree, just tell, yeah? We, we are here to talk and discuss and we can play the game, yeah? Very good. Okay, so if we check, okay, can we find a color which is not red? <clears throat> yes, for example, blue. Mm, yes, for example, blue. Yeah, the color of a blue cup. Yeah, the color of a gl blue cup, it follows it is a color. Except? It is a color because it is suitable to be shown as a U. Yes, if it is suitable to be shown as a U, it's necessarily a color. Except. Oh, wonderful. Yeah, because suitable to be shown as a U and color are equivalent. Except. Yeah, wonderful. Because one is the definition and the other is the definition. Except, yes. Yes, wonderful. Okay. Wow, we we go very deep, yeah. <laughs> okay. Then uh can we find something which is not a, which is none of them? Red and color. <clears throat> an apple, an apple? For yes. example. An apple, for instance, the subject apple, it follows it is not red. Sorry, I don't, I don't listen, to, I don't hear anyone. Oh yeah, okay. It follows that the subject apple is not red. You wanted to say something, no? Your, your mic, yeah, okay. Uh, no, because um, it is not suitable to be shown as a you. Mm. So if it is not suitable to be shown as a who, it's necessarily not red. No. Yeah, it's necessarily yes. not red. Yeah, yes. if it's, yeah, you accept? Yeah, it's necessarily not red. Yeah, yes. Oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. Okay. What did I find? Okay. So usually <clears throat> when we look for something which is none of them, we tend to go to <laughs> to the pink elephant, or to the blue unicorn, yeah. So non-existent, yeah. But sometimes it's a bit easy. So it's nice to have existent, like apple, yeah. That's a very good uh, illustration. Or table, yeah. Or tree, yeah. It follows that tree is not red and it's not a color. So how many points do we have <clears throat> between red and color? Three. Three points, yeah, three ping, three possibilities, wonderful, yes, exactly. So we could uh, uh, express that in that way. If the, the challenger is asking us to posit the pervasion, we will say, if it is red, it's necessarily a color, but if it is a color, it's not necessarily red. Yeah, does everybody agree? 
Good, wonderful, for instance, blue, blue is a color, but not red. Oh, wonderful, and we find something which is none of them, the tree. Wow, that's wonderful. So you have the, <laughs> the answer of that comparison eh, that, that we had in the quiz, yeah? Okay, yeah, very happy, you did well. <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay, for the second round, well, I guess. You don't know the difference between the two, gold spot and sound. Oh, -ho! gold spot and sound. So the the first answer is, is the reason is not established. Okay. So it follows that you know the difference between gold spot and sound. Accept, posit. Haha. Who would say contradictory? Who would say equivalent? Who would say 3P? Who would say 4P? <laughs> I say contradictory. Oh, we have contradictory from the side of the groom in Deutschland. Yeah, yeah, genau. <laughs> Sehr gut. <laughs> so, who wants to join the club of contradictory? Who wants to build another club? Like equivalent or three P, four P. It's contradictory. Contradictory. Okay, so we have a club, the bigger club. Yeah, <laughs> we have Chavila and Zigula in the club. Wow! Well, be careful if you dare to have another club. You need good reasonings. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so it follows that you cannot find any common base between both. Oh, so, okay. So what about the sound of a gold pot? Is it, is it a common base between sound and gold pot? <laughs> Not agree. Why? <laughs> Why? It follows that the subject, the two sound and gold parts are contradictory because there is no common base. They are different and no common base. Yeah, very good. Except. Because we could say, uh, we could say that the sound of a gold pot is just the effect of the gold pot. Yeah. And the gold pot would be its cause. Yeah. So uh, if we have one cause and its effect, they are necessarily contradictory. Yeah. Uh, yeah, necessarily, I would <laughs> maybe debate that. Yeah, for instance, the subject cause of form and form are not contradictory yeah, because otherwise cause of form would not be uh, form. <laughs> okay. No, we, we could say cause of functioning thing and functioning thing, yeah? Cause of functioning thing and functioning thing are cause and effect, but they are not contradictory because the cause of functioning thing has to be a functioning thing. Okay, so that's just a tiny detail. Put that aside for now. But usually, yeah, usually in many cases, most cases, an effect and its cause are necessarily contradictory. Yeah, so they are different and no common base. Wonderful. So uh, just maybe keep it mind, keep it mind, keep in mind now <clears throat> that a cause and its effect usually are contradictory, but in general, generally speaking, cause and effect are equivalent. If it's a cause, it has to be an effect, and if it is an effect, it, it has to be a cause. Yeah. So in general cause and effect are equivalent they are equivalent with functioning thing manifest phenomenon and so on but if it is one cause it's necessarily not its effect yeah okay okay wonderful so because we will play with that later yeah okay so gold pot and sound they are contradictory wonderful so now the next debate <clears throat> You ready? Well, I'm sure you don't know the difference between the two necklace and made of gold. Oh, it was in the quiz as well. Okay, so the answer, <laughs> Sheldon, Sheldon is afraid. <laughs> okay. 
<laughs> so, do you find any common base between necklace and made of gold? Yes, a necklace which is made of gold. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah, but this philosophy is so easy, you know. <laughs> A necklace made of gold. Yes, this one. Okay, for instance. Okay, so uh, is any necklace made of gold? If it's a necklace, is, is that necessarily made of gold? No, there are also like silver necklaces. Yes. Okay, so that's why we can find something which is A but not B. Yes, silver necklace. It's an it follows it's a necklace. Except yes, but the the silver necklace it follows it's not made of gold. Except okay, wonderful. So each time the challenger will try to verify to double check any um <laughs> assertion. Yeah, so we have to prove that the uh, golden necklace is a necklace and made of gold. So we have to prove two things, okay? And we have to prove after that the silver necklace is not made of gold, but it is a necklace, yeah? So we have to prove many things each time. Sometimes the challenger will go quicker because uh, things have been verified already, but uh, sometimes he will, he will insist on some points and maybe try to find some way to <laughs> refute the defender yeah and sometimes it's not possible so something about that point is it's not because we lose a debate that we have a wrong view yeah that's <laughs> if we contradict ourselves for instance we lose the debate but it doesn't mean that the our view is wrong it's just that we cannot def uh, defend that yeah for for now maybe later we can defend that yeah maybe the challenger is too maybe a bit too quick or you know a bit too vicious <laughs> and then we could lose the debate but have a wrong view anyway uh, a good view yeah okay so <clears throat> okay then can we find something which is made of gold but not a necklace yes for example oh. a golden ring yes a golden earring for zingrun and and we had someone else golden statue Sorry? Golden statue. Yes, it's a Romola. Yes, the golden statue. Yeah, I didn't think about that. Yeah, I'm very sorry. I thought about my precious <laughs> in the Lord of Rings. Okay. <laughs> but the golden statue of the Buddha would have been much better. <laughs> okay. Yes, yeah, wonderful. It follows that the uh, uh, golden statue is made of gold. Yes, okay. And the subject golden statue is not a necklace. Except. Yes, it's not a necklace because uh, it is not worn around the neck. <laughs> <laughs> but what about a gao? You know, in a gao, you put a small statue, golden statue in a gao, it's around the neck. <laughs> <laughs> okay yes so okay yes we could say yes because because a statue and a, and a necklace are contradictory yeah yes they are contradictory because <laughs> the subject uh golden ring and uh necklace are contradictory yeah. because No common base. Yes, because they are different and no common base. Yeah. Okay. Wonderful. Very good. Then can we find something which is none of them? Necklace and made of gold? Golden statue? Yes. What would it be? Golden statue. So if it's a, we are looking for something which is not a necklace and it is not made of gold, yeah? Okay. A shoe? 
Uh, sorry. Yeah. A shoe. Yeah. What would what what would it be? Yeah, I, a I shoe. Was yes, a, a shoe. shoe. Yes, yeah. exactly. A shoe. Yeah, shoes. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Well done. Well done, right? Yeah. Or a tree, for instance. Yeah. Okay. So how many possibilities <laughs> do we have between necklace and made of gold? Four possibilities for P. Yeah, we have A and B, A not B, B not A, and not A not B. Yeah, very good, wonderful. Wow, you're very, very, very strong. Okay, well, I guess you don't know the difference between the two, smoke and fire. Oh, eh? <laughs> smoke and fire. Okay, <laughs> so we have that in the quiz as well. So, who wants to give an answer? Anyone? Any answer? Contradictory. Contradictory, Shantila. Contradictory. So, it follows that uh, <clears throat> smoke and fire are contradictory. Accept. Accept. Yeah, very good. They are contradictory because? Uh, one, they are cause and effect. Oh, they are cause and effect. So it follows that if they are cause and effect, they are necessarily contradictory. <laughs> uh, no pervasion. <laughs> so... <laughs> Yes, that's a good point that uh, what you mentioned now, Shantila, because we need after that class or maybe next one to um, approach the syllogism, yeah? <laughs> the three parts consequence. And then we will learn the different types of answers from the defender to that type of syllogism, like accept the reason is not established, no pervasion, and the, the pervasion is opposite, yeah? Okay, so... Uh, and there is another one, yeah. Uh, there is doubt. Okay, so we'll learn that slowly. And uh, but uh, and now uh, I didn't give any reason, yeah. When we have different types of answers, like the uh, no pervasion, it's when the challenger is giving a reason, yeah. But uh, uh, I didn't give any any reason. I just said a consequence, a two part consequence. It follows that smoke, the subject, the two smoke and fire are contradictory. Yeah. So then when we have two part consequence, we have accept or why, yeah, if we disagree. I accept. Okay. So the subject the two smoke and fire are contradictory because no common locus. Okay, no common locus. Okay. Okay. So we had an interesting uh, answer as well from Shantila because they are cause and effect, yeah. But uh, as we've seen before, uh, if if they are cause and effect, they are usually speaking contradictory. But but cause of of functioning thing and functioning thing are are not contradictory, yeah. Because cause of functioning thing is a functioning thing, yeah. It cannot be contradictory with functioning thing. So that's a spe very specific point. But if, if the challenger is not as vicious as me, he will not go in that debate. Okay, he will, give, he will say, okay, if it's cause and effect, okay, they are contradictory. If they are different and no common base, they are contradictory. Yeah, we will accept that, yeah, in most cases. <laughs> okay, very good, you find the answer. Yes. <laughs> so it is not a good uh, reasoning to give uh, that it is cause and effect that is why it's contradictory yes in, in most cases we would accept that but <clears throat> there is one specific point made by Daniel Perdue in uh, a debate in Tibetan Buddhism that that's very that very specific case he's comparing uh, different substances and contradictory yeah different substances and contradictory so we will uh, approach that as well yeah what means one substance or different substances yeah uh, it's uh, it concerns the perception direct perception 
but one and different or different and contradictory it's it's more about thought consciousness yeah so that's why we can find usually speaking for p four possibilities between one substance and contradictory <laughs> okay yeah. so so put put it that aside for now <laughs> Yeah, usually speaking, like if we take a very specific example, like a, a seed and and its sprout, yeah, seed and sprout, they are necessarily contradictory. If it's a seed, it's necessarily not a sprout. And if it's a sprout, it's necessarily not a seed. Yeah. And they are cause and effect. Yeah. A seed is the cause of its sprout, which is its effect. Okay. <laughs> So there are different substances because they appear separately to direct perception and they are contradictory. Yeah, if it's the one, it cannot be the other. But in a very specific uh, context, cause of functioning thing and functioning thing are different substances because one is the cause and the other is the effect. <laughs> but but they are not contradictory because cause of functioning thing has to be a functioning thing. Otherwise it could not be a cause. Okay. Wow, very refined reasonings in the noble Nalanda tradition. Okay, bravo, bravo. <laughs> okay, now can you find, so that's the same with sound and trumpet we had uh, gold pot and sound before and that's the same here sound and trumpet one is the cause the other is the can, can be its effect yeah? not not necessarily any sound is the the effect of the of the trumpet of course okay okay and we had red and white in the in the quiz as well we had red and white yeah it follows that the subject the two red and white are contradictory <laughs> there is no sound no no sound no no ear no eye and like in the heart to try i accept okay. you accept chandila yes they are contradictory because there is no common locus oh so if there is no common locus, they are necessarily contradictory. <laughs> yes. Okay. So it follows that the, the, the subject, the two blue horn of the rabbit and pink horn of the rabbit are contradictory because there is no common locus between them. Existent and uh, no, no common locus. <laughs> yeah. Yes, they exist or they are different. Yeah, they are diverse phenomena and there is no common base. Wonderful. Yeah, so you've seen that <laughs> we repeat a lot. Yeah, in order to engrave the definitions in golden colors in our heart. <laughs> That's very important. Yeah? Okay. So now, matter. In one yeah. class, we Sorry? mentioned uh, some mixture of color, I remember. So, can we say pink is a common locus for red and white? Yeah, that's a good question, Chavila. Yeah. Who would try to give an answer? Who would like to discuss, debate? It follows that the subject pink is a common base between red and white. Accept or why? <laughs> and... Maybe would accept. Yes, Neil? Red and white are uh, are producers of pink. Uh, produce, uh, yeah, they produce the pink color, yeah? That's what you said? Yes? The red and white produce pink, okay. Mm. Yeah, that's interesting. Okay, so if the subject red and white produce pink, it follows that they cannot be pink. 
True. Okay, and the subject pink cannot be red and white. Except. Okay, I cannot be red and white because Because it's uh, it's neither. Yes, exactly. Pink, the subject pink is not red and it's not white. It's not red because it is not suitable to be called a red hue. Yeah, it's not suitable to be shown as a red hue. Exactly. Yes, if it is not suitable to be shown as a red hue, it's necessarily not red. Yes, accept. Or accept. Yeah. Okay, accept. Yeah, exactly. Wonderful. And the subject pink, it follows it is not white. I accept. Okay, it is not white because? It is not suitable to be called a white hue. Exactly, it is not suitable to be called, oh yes, a white hue. Yes, in Tibetan, it would, it would be uh, 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 to be shown, to be shown as a red hue or to be shown as a white hue. Yeah, because the white, red, they are objects of apprehension of I consciousnesses. Yeah, so they are shown. Yeah, the, that's that's why the definition is a bit awkward in one sense. Yeah? <laughs> it's very short and it, it doesn't explain anything because we have to see yeah, what is red, what is white. We will show, oh, look, it is red, look, it is white. Yeah, so that's why we say dot to tenburu in Tibetan. Yeah? It has to be shown as a red hue or it has to be shown as a hue. Yeah, okay. Okay, very good. So then if someone, the defend, the challenger asks you to, to give the definition of emptiness, then you could, say, you could say it is to be shown, suitable to be shown as emptiness. <laughs> no, 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 it's not as, as simple as that, yeah, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so matter and consciousness, how many points? Easy, yeah. So it follows that matter and consciousness are contradictory. Unless someone gives a common base between matter and consciousness. Eh? Sometimes people give that answer. The person, the person, it follows that it is matter and consciousness. Why? <laughs> Why? Oh, it follows that the subject person is not matter and consciousness. Except? Okay. But uh, when we say, for instance, the person is sitting because the, the, the body is sitting. So it follows that the person is its body or his or her body. Why? <laughs> okay, but when we say that the, for instance, that the person is young because the body is young, or the person is, uh, how do you say, uh, is uh, standing because the body is standing, or the person is in good health because the body is in good health, so the person is the body. Why? <laughs> the person is, but person is a non-associated compositional factor, and uh -huh. it's the, um, it's imputed on the accumulation of the aggregates. Yes. Works? Yeah. Very good. So the definition of a person, yeah, it's a, uh, we say an, a me or uh, an individual, uh, imputed independence on one or the other of his aggregates yeah? of the aggregates yeah okay yeah very good okay so if it is uh an imputedly existent it's necessarily uh, not matter and consciousness yeah okay very good okay we will discuss a little bit about that next time
It follows that you know very good Zingrula, very good. It follows that you know the difference between the two. It flies in the air and burns. Wow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so uh, let's try to see. Okay. Yeah, very good. So who would say? Who would give an answer? Okay, who would say a contradictory? Who would say equivalent? Who would say three P? Who would say four P? Four P. Hmm, four P. Four P. Four P. Oh, wow, lots of four P. Who would say contradictory? No. <laughs> okay, otherwise no bird would be able to fly in the air. Okay. Okay, <laughs> very good. So, uh, I think uh, I don't have the slides after, but we can discuss like this. Okay, it flies in the air and bird. Okay, so let's try to check. Okay, it flies in the air and bird. So, <laughs> I heard 4P. Who said 4P? Yes, raise your hand. Okay, very good. Who wants to say 3P? Okay, we have lots of 4P. Who wants to say 3P? It flies in the air and it, and bird. Yeah, in the quizzes, sometimes, yeah, we have 3P. I've seen 3P sometimes, okay, but no problem. It means that we have common base between it flies in the air and bird, yeah, for instance? For instance, eagle. Yes? For instance, an eagle. An eagle, yeah, wonderful, yeah. Eagles, yeah, beautiful uh, country rock band, eagles. <laughs> yes, okay, they fly in the air, yeah, in the plane. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> an eagle, yeah, an eagle is a bird. Yes, and it flies in the air. I agree. Okay. Very good. But uh, what about the uh, mother eagle feeding the babies? Does it fly in the air when it uh, feeds the babies? No, but while catching the prey. Okay. Yes, very good. So take the subject, an eagle catching the prey. Okay. <laughs> very good. Yes, it follows that it flies in the air. <laughs> okay. Yes. Yes, very good. And it is a bird. So it's a common base between flying the air. It, it flies in the air and bird. Very good. So, yeah, we have a common base. So, but uh, is it equivalent? Yeah, it flies in the air and bird. Is it equivalent? So, do we have only common, uh, common bases? No. <laughs> No, so it can fly in the air without being a bird. Yeah, for instance, yeah, Batman, Superman, and even Wonder Woman, yeah, is flying in the air, yeah, in the second episode, yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh so, so what can you find? Like an illustration of it uh, except the Avengers or Justice League? Accept them if you can find some uh, something or someone who flies in the air but is not a bird. A housefly. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. Aeroplane in the air. Huh? Certain one Airplane in the air. Yeah. Very good. An airplane in the air. Yes, <laughs> very precise. Yeah, that's why, uh, like His Holiness the Dalai Lama says, in the Nalanda tradition, we have good teeth and good uh, cheeks in order to to uh, to <laughs> to crunch the dharma. Yeah, so we need to be precise and like good teeth. Exactly. <laughs> you all have good teeth. That's wonderful. Okay. The Okay, a plane in the air. It follows that it flies in the air. 
Yes, okay. And the uh, plane in the air, it's not a bird. Okay, it's not a bird because? Uh, it, is, it is different and has no common base. <laughs> Yes, it's not a bird because there are no common base between a uh, plane and bird. Yeah, a bird is a sen sentient being, yeah, is a person. Yeah, that's very important for Buddhism. A bird is also imputed in dependence on one or the other of his aggregates. So a bird is a person, is a kansa, is a, how do you say person? A uh, purusha, yeah, in Sanskrit. Is a purusha, is a person. Yeah, that's important. Yeah, it's a non-human person. Okay, very good. Okay, so and then I uh, can. Uh, okay, <laughs> okay. So what about an ostrich in a plane? <laughs> is it a bird? <laughs> and does it fly in the air? <laughs> The yeah, Buddhist philosophy is so funny. <laughs> so no stretch in a plane. Is that a bird? Is that flying in the air? Airplane in the uh, empty airplane in the air. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So an empty plane in the air without even even the pilot. Yeah. <laughs> that's it and one more company <laughs> low price no pilot <laughs> uh, unmanned unmanned uh, air aeroplane <laughs> yes <laughs> okay <laughs> very good oh Nicola test the day chat in now test the leg under the leg what the boy me what the boy into you now I got so picky boy John <laughs> awesome is bien. We have a lot of fun and they have very good answers. They are so sharp. Wow, really? Yeah, that's wonderful. So we discovered today that an ostrich in a plane is a common base between it flies in the air and birds. <laughs> Nicola, you should be overwhelmed by the news. Actually, I didn't hear. I think the internet here is very bad. I'm so sorry. Okay, sorry, no problem. Okay, <laughs> so <laughs> wonderful. So we found something which is at the same time uh, something which flies in the air and bird. Yeah. Okay. So in a stretch in a plane, <laughs> in the flying plane. Oh, okay. So now we have something which is, it flies in the air, but not bird. We had the plane in the air, yeah? Okay. And uh, <laughs> without any pilot, yeah? In Tete uh, Wombo's company. <laughs> and we have a bird <laughs> which doesn't which doesn't fly in the air. Oh, yeah, we had, we, what did we have? A bird which doesn't fly in the air? Eagle feeding her chicks. Oh, yes, exactly, Shantila, exactly. The eagle, the mother eagle feeding her, uh, uh, yeah, how do you say chicks? The, 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 the yeah, baby, baby is there. Okay, yes, wonderful. And do we have uh, something which is none of them? It flies in the air and bird. A flying pigeon. A flying pigeon, it follows that it's not a bird. You said both of them or none of them? None of them. <laughs> oh, sorry. A dog. A dog. Oh, wow. It follows the subject a dog. It follows it's not a bird. Except. Okay. So the, the subject a dog that just ate a bird. It follows <laughs> that it's not at the same time a dog and a bird. Except. <laughs> So now, even better, a bird that ate a dog. It follows that it's not a dog and a, and a bird. 
Okay. Okay. And it's, it doesn't fly in the air. If, if your dog is in a plane, he's in a flying plane, it doesn't fly in the air. Well, the plane is flying. The dog is just in the plane that is flying. Okay. So we have to be precise. <laughs> So, a dog which is afraid of uh, flying in a plane. <laughs> a dog on a boat. It follows that a dog on a boat is not flying in the air. You accept? The subject, a dog on a boat, is not flying in the air. Accept. Okay, but if the boat is in a plane... <laughs> Okay, I'm joking. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> I don't want you to get nuts. <laughs> okay, so we had lots of fun. So it was the answers of the quiz, but you can still redo it if you want to play again with that. <clears throat> oh, Caps, welcome. Hey, French. French girl. Super girl. Super Caps. Yeah, okay. Very, very, very expert in debate as well. Be careful. So I hope you will join next, next time as well, yeah, Caps, yeah, because we will slowly, slowly dive into the Buddhist psychology as well. Okay, but slowly, yeah. <laughs> yes, but I wanted to speak a little bit again about that point, uh, why existence is permanent. I have slides on that. We, we've seen them very quickly before, but just to 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 recap a little bit yeah about that okay okay let's start with that no, no. okay yes, yes 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 okay very good okay so we've seen that uh, as you remember all if it is existent it has to be permanent or impermanent yeah do you all agree Yeah, you all agree with that? If it if it if it exists, it has to be permanent or impermanent. Yeah. Okay, maybe maybe you're all tied with all the debates we made, but that's okay. <laughs> okay, so if it exists, it has to be permanent or impermanent. Okay, so we've seen uh, we've seen last time actually the market is saying that. Yeah, he said that. Yeah, because we have two objects of comprehension, we have two types of valid cognition. Yeah. Okay. So and time is permanent or not permanent? So time would be impermanent. Yeah. Time, uh, for instance, a day is is time. Yeah. Do you agree with that? Itala is relative. Okay, yeah, it's relative, but uh, do, uh, do you agree to say that day, a day is a kind of time, an hour is a time, is a, is a, is a continuum of time, yeah, do you agree with that? Day is the human, yes. Okay, and an hour comes to its end, naturally, yeah, we don't have to do anything in order for an hour to go slowly towards its end, do you agree with that? Uh, in the human scale, yes. Yes. So it follows that an hour is impermanent. It's changing moment by moment, and it's redu It's it's decreasing moment by moment. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So it's impermanent, but it's not form and it's not consciousness. It's a non-associated uh, composition of factor. Yeah. As we've seen before. So it's impermanent, but it's not matter and it's not consciousness. Yeah. Okay. We will. Maybe speak a little oh, bit okay. about that next time as well. Eh? well what are the causes and conditions? Sorry, John Shuper, I don't know. Your mic is even worse than mine. Oh, okay. <laughs> Can you hear me like this? Yeah. Okay. What are the causes? Because a, a, an impermanent phenomenon um, arises from causes and conditions. Yes. So what are the causes and conditions of time? So the previous moment of time. Ah, uh, of course, yeah. <laughs> like for instance, yesterday is the cause of today. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, very good. 
So why you, do you remember? Do you all remember what we've said? What kind of illustration we used last time in order to understand why the subject existent is permanent? We used something very concrete. Do you remember? Do you remember rice? Organic and inorganic rice. Then organic rice and inorganic rice. Yeah, inorganic rice is in one sense polluting the organic rice when we mix them. Yeah. So here another illustration. Thought consciousness would be illustrated by the glass when we need glass in order to read. Yeah. Okay. So letters. Letters would illustrate permanent phenomena. Yeah, there will be small letters. So we need glass in order to read them. Yeah, they are too small in one sense. Yeah, in that in that illustration. And the numbers would be bigger. Yeah. So they would illustrate here in permanent phenomena. So because the numbers are big enough, we don't need the glass to read them. But when when you want you want to read a book, you have numbers, you have letters all together. So you, you don't put out your glasses in order to read the whole book. You keep them on your nose, yeah? So it follows that the whole set of letters and numbers appears through the glasses. So the, because here the, glass, the glasses illustrate the thought consciousness and the letters and numbers, they illustrate the permanent and impermanent phenomena, the whole set of permanent and impermanent, so the whole set of existent appears through the glasses of the thought consciousness. So it, be, it it is permanent. Yeah, the whole set is permanent. But if it is one instance of that set, it's not necessarily permanent. Okay, so another illustration, you think about permanence, so you need your thought consciousness. And to that category, you add impermanent phenomena in order to grasp at uh existence yeah when you mix per all the permanent phenomena and all the impermanent phenomena you have existence yeah? <laughs> so yeah even if you added impermanent phenomena because you have the thought consciousness and because both appear to the thought consciousness the subject existent is an appearing object to thought consciousness and it is permanent yeah but if it exists it's not necessarily permanent one also one is permanent yeah because you have many uh, instances of one which are permanent and many which are impermanent yeah so one is impermanent po uh, sorry one one is permanent the subject one is permanent okay because it's the appearing object to thought consciousness you add to that pot pot is impermanent but one with pot is permanent because one is polluting yeah, one is permanent, it's polluting the whole set. So one with thought is permanent because it's the appearing object to thought consciousness. But if it is one with thought, it's necessarily not permanent. Because if it is one with thought, what is that? It's pot. Yeah, and pot is necessarily not permanent. Yeah, so the subject one with pot is permanent, but if it is one with pot, it's necessarily impermanent because it is pot. Okay, so that's something that we will use later. Yeah, okay, I finished with the slides today. Wow, and what time is it? Wow, wonderful. Do you have any question concerning what we've seen today? Uh, I, I noticed something very important as well in the quiz. Uh, that's why it's so useful to, to do that, uh, because then I can check a little bit what has been acquired uh, by you, and you, you have a lot. Yeah, <laughs> that's very good. As one point is very interesting. Like if it is, uh, I don't remember in the quiz, I will just check again. It is here somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> It was one of the consequences. <clears throat> Just let me check. Could someone share the, the link of the quiz in the chat, please, if you have it at hand? Uh, yeah, I'm just checking in the, the quiz now, so I will just do that after one second when I find it. It's here. Yeah, okay. 
Yes. Yes. Then in the chat. Because I had had questions regarding the quiz, but I yeah I'm traveling, so I don't have the quiz oh, at hand. That's true. Yes, Nicola. Yeah, that's true. So the chat is here. Okay. Wonderful. It should be that. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Okay, so we can discuss about some points in the quiz. Very good. Nicola, you remember your questions? So I will do a sharing anyway. Okay, so for the, the beginning, it's okay for everyone, yeah? The threefold goal of debate is okay. Yeah, it's not, unfortunately, it's not roots, rock, and reggae. <laughs> okay. Okay, and also for Achara Dignaga, Achara Dharmakiti, very good. Okay, so in the why, yeah, there was something very interesting. Okay, so does everyone agree that uh, the subject cup is one? You see the I sharing? Yeah. Okay, yes. yeah, you accept it, Chavila. Okay, very good. Yeah, it is one because we don't compare it with anything. Yeah, we just select cup in the whole multiverse, just cup. So it follows it is one. Yeah, it's just a phenomenon which is not diverse. Yeah, okay, very good. Okay, so the two red and color are different. I think everyone yeah, is okay uh, on, that, on that point. Uh, okay, one here, the number four here, it follows that the subject, the two, table and red are contradictory. Yeah, that's interesting. Who would say yes? I accept. Who would say no? Why? I accept. Mm, Nicola accepts. Why? <laughs> okay, Nicola, why? There will be some oh, maybe, yeah? maybe one. Yeah. <laughs> okay so it follows that the subject the two table and red are not contradictory except they are not contradictory it follows that you can find a common base between table and red except okay what what would it be a red table a red table it follows that it is red why Ah, because you posit it as an illustration, as a common base between red and table. So it has to be red, and it has to be a table. So I was right, it's uh, contradictory. <laughs> oh, the contradictory because? Because you cannot posit something that is both. Oh, so it follows that blue unicorn and pink unicorn are contradictory because you cannot posit something which, which can be both. Except? Oh, so they exist because they are, they are different <laughs> Pokemon base. <laughs> okay. okay, everybody agrees that table and red are contradictory <clears throat> because table is not the color of a table. Red can be. Uh, it's not necessarily, but red. Red is the color of the red table. Do you agree? The, the subject red is the color of a red table. You agree? Agree. agree. Okay, thank you, Shantila. Yeah, okay. So, yeah, the red table cannot be the color of a red table. Yeah, we all agree. I agree. On that. Yeah, very good, because the red table is the characterized phenomenon and red, the red color of a table, the red color of a table is the color of a table. It's not a table. Yeah, so the red table is not red, but the color of a red table is red. Yeah. Okay, very good. But the table and red, so we would say the red table and its color, they are contradictory because, yeah, they are different. And there is nothing which can be a table and a color. It's not possible. But 
the the red table and its color are one substance the chick in tibetan yeah or ekadravya in sanskrit yeah one substance what does it mean who wa who wants to to recall what i said just 10 minutes ago <laughs> What does it mean to be one substance? They appear to a direct perception and they don't appear separately. They appear to a direct perception and they don't appear separately. So where the, the red table appears, its color appears. And where the color of the red table appears, the red table appears. Do you agree with me? If you want to point towards the, 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 the color of the table, you have to point toward the table, yeah? And if you want to, to point toward the table, you have to point toward the red color of the table. Do you agree with me? So they appear both to the same direct perception and they don't appear separately. Well, that's what means one substance. We will have debates on that later, yeah? But just to, 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 to give that... Uh, point that input is that one substance means for the direct perception direct perception is not able to distinguish them thought consciousness is able to do so we know that the table is characterized and the color is the characteristic thought consciousness can distinguish them so they are different because for thought consciousness they are diverse but for direct perception they cannot be distinguished so that's why they are contradictory but they are one substance. Like you put syrup in, in a glass of water. Yeah, you put a very, <laughs> very, uh, how do you say, <laughs> explosive uh, <laughs> uh, chemical syrup <laughs> in a glass of water, like a green thing, yeah, like for mint. Yeah, <clears throat> when, when you look at the glass of water, are you looking at the color of the water? Yes, and when you are looking at the color of water, you are looking at the water. So there are one substance for your eye consciousness. Do you agree with me? <laughs> Hello, Houston. Is the eye consciousness the enabler? Sorry? Neil? Is I consciousness like the enabler, enabling, enabling the the property or the characteristic? Yes, we could say so. We could say that the I consciousness is deciding in one sense if two phenomena uh, are one substance or two di two different substances. Like for instance, <laughs> uh, table and chair. Table and chair are different substances because our eye consciousness is able to distinguish them, no? Yeah? We could say a seed and its sprout are different substances because when one appears, the other cannot appear. So they necessarily appear separately. So they are necessarily different substances, yeah? Do you agree with me? And they are contradictory, but the table and its color are still contradictory, but one substance because our eye consciousness is not able to distinguish them. Okay, we could say like, for instance, you put some hot water in your glass, then now you put your finger in the in the hot water, yeah, not too hot, eh? not, not boiling, <laughs> not boiling water, <laughs> just... <laughs> Just hot water, warm water. Yeah, you put your finger in that. Can your uh, body consciousness distinguish the heat of the water and the water itself? No. So for your tactile consciousness, the warmth of the water and the water are one substance. But for the thought consciousness, they are still contradictory. Yeah, heat. And water are contradictory. Uh, yeah, maybe not contradictory with that, but they're different. They are still different for the thought consciousness. So, okay, Nico, do you remember the questions you had? Actually, no, because I cannot see my answers, but maybe you can see them. Yes, sure. 
Yes, I will look at them. Uh, okay. Uh, yes, uh, I don't remember which one you. Oh, yeah, more answers. Yeah, it's then. Wow. If, if you go to individual, yeah, then you could probably see my answers. Yeah, I think you were the fourth or the fifth one or something like this. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. Because I, I, I made some tests to check if the answers were put correctly. Maybe the eighth one, two was very good. Okay, and I think I'll find you somewhere. Did that many times. Daniel was good. Oh, yeah, Nicole. Okay. Here. Okay, table and red, we did so. Okay, we did, yeah. Then after we had gold pot and sand. So we just, if you if you check the replay, we just played with all of that just before, yeah. Okay. Of, yeah. So then we we had some slides about that, and one is interesting as well. Yeah, compassion and exists in the mind of a Buddha. So this one, uh, sometimes I found three three possibilities that. Uh, yeah, uh, we can double check, of course. Yeah, if it exists in the mind of a Buddha, is it necessarily compassion? We could ask ourselves. Yeah, we would say yes. I accept. If it exists in the mind of a Buddha, it's necessarily compassion. No, Nikolai doesn't say. Doesn't accept. Okay, it's not necessarily compassion. For instance, well, it could be. It could be, I don't know, thinking about the water, or it could be the wisdom realizing emptiness, or it could be, it could be any other mind. Yes, exactly. Any other mind. So anger. It could be any other virtuous mind. <laughs> so, okay. Very good, Nicola. Very good. Okay. So, and if it's compassion, it's not necessarily in the mind of a Buddha. Yes, it could be in the mind of a Shravaka. Yes, very good. Okay, very good. <laughs> so we find four possibilities, yeah, four P between compassion and existence in the mind of a Buddha. Yeah? Okay, I consciousness and consciousness, it's easy. Three P, yeah? if it's an I consciousness, it's necessarily consciousness. Yeah, But if it's not a consciousness, if it's not a, uh, sorry, <laughs> but if it's not a consciousness, oops. Okay, if it's an eye consciousness, it's necessarily a consciousness, but if it's a consciousness, it's not necessarily an eye consciousness, it can be an ear consciousness. Okay, matter and consciousness, we did so. And square and shape, also 3P, yeah? Okay, fire and hot and burning. Fire and hot and burning. It's equivalent. Oh. Because, because one is the definition, the other is the definiendum. Hmm. So if one is the definition and the other is the definition, then they have to be equivalent. Can you say again? If if one is the definition and the other it's the, is its definition, they have to be equivalent. I think so. <laughs> oh, that's another answer. Yeah, maybe Chapa Chekisange forgot to add this one in the <laughs> of the defender. I, I think so. Maybe more or less. <laughs> Perhaps. Perhaps. <laughs> uh, with regard to that, uh, uh, next time we will see the syllogism and the, the answers of the defender. We will play with that. And usually we have four types of answers, but a fifth one, as we said before, can be added as uh, again, Nawang Jimba in, the, in France a few years uh, ago said so. In Jebungoman, for instance, they have also Tetsamsa. They have Tetsamsa, it means we have doubt. There is some doubt about, because they are not really sure about the, the, the subject. They don't really understand the subject. But uh, uh, apart from that, we mainly have four types of answers. Yeah, we approach that next time. Okay, very good. So uh, we covered, I think, everything except one I wanted to come, but we will, to come back to that, but we will go again in that. Okay. Uh, the ninth one here, it follows that if it is different from cup, it's not necessarily contradictory with cup. And the previous one, yeah, <clears throat> the previous one, the eighth one, 
it follows that if it is different from cup, it's necessarily a non-cup. So those are very important because we have to uh, acquire some nuance, some nuance in our way to think between different, contradictory, and none. Yeah, like different from cup, contradictory with cup, and non-cup. Yeah, that's very different. <laughs> That's very different. So we will play with that next time as well. Because as we said, permanent and impermanent, okay, that's important. But also one and different. Yeah, that's very important in order to, to uh, grasp those tools in order to, to get towards the Madhyamaka. Yeah, that's very important. Yeah? Okay, so it may be too much for today. I'm really sorry. I'm talking too much as usual. But so happy with your answers and your active minds and your motivation. That's just a great pleasure. That's a delight. That's the best offering to do to His Holiness the Dalai Lama and all our very qualified teachers like Gen Dandul, Gen Losel, Gen Jensen, and so on. So many good teachers are so proud of you because they, <laughs> they want you to light the lamp of knowledge of wisdom for the sake of all the beings and that's why what we are doing now so that's just so precious thank you so much really i really appreciate it. thank you so much see you next time thank you so much Christopher. Well, and thank you, you uh, for taking the host <laughs> thank you nico thank you, thank, you. Thank, you. Thank, you. thank you everyone yeah it was a great pleasure yeah see you next time see you next wednesday I will send you the, 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 the slides, yeah? You will have it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye -bye. Good night.